You can get it for a full year for $1,195, which is a savings of $593, or 33%. So check it out right on the front page of TFN, and folks, everything to gain, zero to lose. Steve Rhodes, what's going on? Start building my arc over here. Oh, is it <laughs> just raining? in case. Just in case it decides to not stop raining. Oh, we got that yesterday, we, and the day before. Is that you know, is that is that 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 uh, that's a new storm coming in? Then I know this this is uh, we got quite a bit of rain, man. No doubt. Yeah, yeah. It was great during the uh, during the lockdown time period, at least on the southeast coast, because the the weather was perfect, blue skies. It was. Uh, Low humidity and in a boom, all of a sudden, you know, the end of May, June rolls in, and it's just a—it's been a super soaker. So, yeah, and, and I don't, you know, I don't mind if it rains. I just prefer for it to rain in the evening time. Uh, totally. And, you know, but those poor uh, golf courses, right? Four inches uh, of rain destroy a golf course, folks. Well, they don't destroy them, but you can't go out in it. That's the bottom line. That's right. That's yeah. right. That's right. So, hey, I thought we would uh, start by uh, taking a look at the uh, markets, and and first, I want to make sure that folks truly understand that you know what what you and I do here when we're taking a look at the markets. It's just so important, as you did uh, during your opening segment, where you're taking a look at so many different markets, and and it's important to understand what's going on in the currency area because we're all interconnected. So we live in an interconnected world, meaning we've got to focus on more than just what is taking place in the uh, U.S. And, and and it also means, and especially true with regard to our markets, is it's so important to understand uh, what I refer to as the global flow of capital. There's always this big ball of money. I like to visualize this, this little metaphor, this big ball of money that's just floating around the world. And it's important for you and I to be able to figure out, is it being parked anywhere? Because it'll be parked where there's an area where there is is an area of confidence, we'll call it. And a way that I'm able to track this uh, is uh, with inside my eSignal software. Uh, this happens to be a table that takes us back to uh, March of 09, about 45 quarters ago. And here it becomes easy because I track instruments, uh, both in US dollars, that'll usually be the top line. And then in the comment column, as you can see, I've got the Dow price, Dow futures, and I've got Dow futures in euros, then in yen, and then in pounds. And then next to that is a column it's labeled ROC. That's the rate of change. So it gives you a feel for what the percentage rate of change has been from the low of that quarter, 45 quarters ago. So it takes us back into March of 2009. Now, in real bull markets, um, what we see out here is we'll see a concentration of capital somewhere. Well, since that 09 bottom, the concentration of capital has been in the U.S. And it's been in the U.S. in a massive way. If we take a look at the Dow futures as an example, and this snapshot was probably from about an hour ago, about a 420% rate of change since that March low. Now, if we start taking a look at the DAX or the FTSE or the Shanghai, we'll see a 213% or a 64% or a 23% or even gold since that time period, a 53% move. But as we take a look at major markets around the globe, it's very easy here to see where that global flow of capital was inside the U.S. In fact, when we take a look at how the Dow traded, has traded in terms of euros, to take uh, to take uh, to take into consideration either appreciation or depreciation of these currencies out here, we can see that the Dow had a 500 percent rate of change in terms of euros. So if you're trading the markets, you're sitting over in Europe, uh, you're taking a look at uh, how the Dow is performing. You've had a bigger winner priced in your local currency which is the way that you would look at it versus going on in U.S. dollars. And so this is where it's really important for us to try to figure out where is capital concentrated. It doesn't necessarily have to be the U.S. stock market. It could be commodities. Of course, if we take a look at the Goldman Sachs Commodity Index, we'll see that since March of 2009, it's down 59%. So certainly that's not where money had concentrated. Now, what we can also do is we don't have to just go to the 2009, the March 2009 bottom. Tom, you and I can take a look at March of 2020. And here when we see this, so it's been 12 weeks since that low, and we do see nice performance in the Dow uh, via the diamonds out there, about 43%. Germany's got a 57% move off of the low using the ETF. So here I've got the ETFs, and that way folks that are watching us, they can do this at home on their charts as well. Uh, but what this data table is telling us, telling me, Tom, is there is no concentration of capital anywhere. 
that instead I take a look at this and say, this is just normal counter trend rally inside the markets, and this is worldwide. Now, we can also take a look at the chart patterns uh, that are going on worldwide. And you had mentioned the uh, the IW on Russell 2000. And yes. thanks for doing that, because I hadn't picked up on the fact that it didn't take out its prior highs, which, Tom, is very similar to all of these other major markets out here. There was already problems brewing in Australia, in uh, Canada, in Germany, even though Germany's had a nice bounce off the bottom. Lower left-hand panel, take a look at the descending trend line. In fact, this morning, or, or as of the close today, price got right up into that uh, trend line. So the, the German DAX is close to a very key level of resistance out here. But this shows us all of these downtrends that were in place across the globe prior to the uh, COVID-19. Now, the exception here is the Dow. Now, all that makes sense when we took a look at the global flow of capital. Now, earlier I had mentioned that markets are interconnected. So this is a line chart that takes a look at the Dow, the Shanghai, the Nikkei, and the DAX, we can see that markets tend to top and bottom at the same time. So if markets are topping, and if markets are topping right now, or whenever they would top, we should see signals across the globe. And if we take a look at the Dow right now, one of the tools that I use is the Tom DeMarc uh, nine count out here. Well, the Dow has completed that pattern and a top will be in place as long as price doesn't close above whatever the high today will be. So it's got a topping signal. The NDX 100, which led the markets higher on its weekly time frame, is in a TD nine count pattern. The FTSE completed a TD nine count top uh, today. The Shanghai has completed a TD nine count. So to go take a look at all those charts would take a ton of time. Instead, Tom, I've got this little market analyzer tool that I've developed that subscribers and I track, we can see exactly what is going on across the globe utilizing these patterns. So if you take a look at this column, about five or five from the left out here, it's got D dash TD9. These are the daily TD9 signals. This is in essence live okay. as of maybe about a half an hour ago. Yeah. And everything in pink out here is a potential topping signal. The next column to it is the Chapman wave, and I look for wave number seven or letter G. So look at all of the topping signals that are present on the daily time frame. Look at all the topping signals. If we go over several columns to the right on the weekly time frame, we've got similar uh, uh, signals coming from the monthly time frame. So this allows us to see what's going on across the globe. And, and I'd summarize it like this, Tom, a market top may be just around the corner. And we're talking just over the course of the next couple of days out here. And, and I can tell you.